All right. So um, as you guys see, I have there this this week's joke. I mean, CFP rankings. Um, because Boo! Um, the I mean, it's been kind of a joke for, for many weeks, and I don't know why I expected it to change. But I mean, if you if you remember, and I hate it when I'm right sometimes, but I think the last couple of weeks I said our top four is basically who we're going to have. And that's what mm-hmm. it was. Um, so in, in this order, number one, uh, Alabama, number two, Clemson, number three, Ohio State, number four, Notre Dame, and then Texas A&M, oh. the first team left out, uh, and then number six, Oklahoma, after they beat Iowa State in the Big 12 championship, oh. number seven, Florida, number eight, Cincinnati, after winning their conference championship, and then Georgia at number nine, and Iowa State at number 10, so um yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot going on here, and and you know you could listen. I, I know the committees put forth their logic, and and I guess supposedly according to their logic for Notre Dame, it makes sense is in terms of comparing your wins and losses with uh, with Texas A and M. But it's still, I mean, we you okay, didn't we've seen this game twice. Play your last regular season game. Well, that too. But they they've also we've also seen this movie twice. The first time Clemson was without Trevor Lawrence, but they were also without like three key defensive starters as well. And so yeah, they had some Rona going on. I'm not saying that that game didn't count, but the second game we got a more more of an indication on how things are actually going to go, and Notre Dame got destroyed. And so I'm like, why do we want to watch that movie again? We've already seen it twice. Um, and then the whole thing with Ohio State, we've already, you know, talked about that ad nauseum. But, um, but still, the fact remains that they've played, you know, just about half the number of games that most of these teams have. Um, we've talked about name recognition, uh, all the stuff, you know, money talks, all that, ratings, whatever you want to bring into the equation. But Ohio State – you know, whether you want to agree with us or not, got a free pass this year, um, and, and they just put them in there. I, I think they had played what, – what was it when the, the first week that they had even played a game, people had put them in, like, the top four yeah. like, after their first yeah. game. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's, um, that's, 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 again, that ND goes a long way. Yeah, well, well, I mean, it, no, yeah. we're talking about Ohio State. Ohio State, but you could. You oh, could I'm have, sorry, I missed miss that. But Sorry. you could, you could apply no, that we'll logic to back. either team, I'm really, though. I mean, I'm, you're, I'm, you're right, I'm, though. I'm, I'm, they're the yeah, two I'm teams still, that still we always say. These two teams. Yeah, it's the two teams we're always like they're drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah. They're, yes. They're, yes. Or maybe they're providing Every the Kool Aid for everyone to drink in the committee room. I don't yeah. know, but it's if I'm again, I'm going to go to bat for A and M here very out of character for me i'm in the holiday <laughs> match writing it down again a second time <laughs> i know i'm in the holiday spirit but if i'm an a&m team and it's just like jimbo fisher said they lost to the number one team in the country 28 points sure but notre dame what lost to clemson by 24 points it's, yeah okay they both have so you're losing losses. yeah you only won it's like you mentioned you won against them when they didn't have everybody you come in, you lose against them by a lot. So your only loss is that, and their only loss is to Bama. And if I think if you look at the rest of the strength of schedule, I think a and holds up. Whereas like Notre Dame, they're like, well, they played North Carolina. Right. I think that game is actually cool. what got Notre Dame in over a it, it absolutely is. It Which absolutely is. Which is funny because a and going to play them in their bowl game, North yep. Carolina. So and I hope, they, I, I hope they beat the pants <laughs> off of them because it's annoying. I, like you said, we've talked at length about Ohio State, and apparently their uh, length of schedule never even came up in the committee room, according no. to the committee spokesperson on the show. He's like, no, that wasn't even an issue. It's like, yeah. well, it should have been, John. Right. Um, he's like, the committee doesn't care as much as the fans do. Right. And I think, who was it, Jimbo Fisher? No, it was Brian. Did you guys watch the interview with Brian Kelly after um, the selection show? I saw show? an interview, a piece of one, but I'm not sure if I know what you're talking about. I saw the one they had on game day. I didn't see that one. Fantastic. I, I've interviewed Brian Kelly before. He's very articulate. He's, he's very great to interview. But um, they were asking him, you know, how do you feel getting into, uh, into the, you know, the top four? And he's talking or whatever. And they're like, how do you feel about some of the other teams? And without saying anything he's like well you know I just 
I understand like the committee um, and, and all the things that they have to weigh. He said, but however, the committee, you know, the fans, whoever it is, he said, they're not football. They're not active football coaches. He's like, you know, they're not coming in there every day and seeing this. They haven't dealt with this season the way we've had to deal with this season day in and day out, going to get tested, waiting on results, figuring out, you know, the moves of who's playing and who can't play. He's like, it's a lot. And he said, as football coaches, it matters like how many games you've had to play. Right. And I was just like, I ain't good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I, it's just, like I said, I don't I, necessarily I, want Notre Dame in there, but Brian Kelly throwing some low key shade to Ohio State right. warmed my heart. And here's another thing. So, let, Honestly, would A&M do any better against Bama than Notre Dame is going to do? Probably not. But I really wish that we would have at least seen it. You know, I mean, I know we saw it earlier in the season. But again, a lot has happened since then. Whereas the last time Notre I'd rather Dame Notre a, a Dame in team, there, we know than what Ohio happened. State. True. I'm fi- I'm honestly fine with Notre Dame in there over Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. I I just yeah. I don't know what else to say. Um, I, I wish. And poor that, Cincinnati is like yeah. waiting at the at their facility during the selection show, and they're like, "We're not gonna know. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be us." And no. then it's not, and it's like I, I think when you look at this, um, and it's just an argument for an eight team playoff. If you're not in a Power Five conference, you're not getting. You're, you're just not, not getting in um, nope. at all. And you're not I think invited to the party. Cincinnati proved that. Yeah, they just proved that. Yeah, it really doesn't matter what, what you do. I'm sorry, Matt, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, that that's the thing. We've seen it every season for the last mm-hmm. 20 seasons. You have a Boise State, you have a UCF, you have a Cincinnati, you have one of these underdog, non-Power 5 teams that can't get to called to the dance because they're not in, the power, in a Power 5 conference. And I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I probably shouldn't say this, but you know what? I'm going to say it. Cincinnati has more of a claim to be in the playoff than Ohio State does. You're in absolutely my right. Say it again for the people won, in the back. They've, they've won nine bloody games. Right. Ohio State's played six. They've only played two ranked opponents. And right. the only reason they played the second one is because that was in their conference championship. So right. if you're an Ohio State fan and you're watching this video right now, I want you to listen really closely because I'm about to drop some truth on you. You don't deserve to be in the freaking playoff done yeah send that tweet because it doesn't make sense it doesn't six wins you've played half of the games as everybody else and i know last week i played devil's devil's advocate yeah. but that was last week that was where this crap got real <laughs> let's be honest here how do you how do you roll up well, hold on a second let me find the dead gum thing stupid seven straight sec wins some schools haven't even played seven games if you want to pick the four best teams we're one of them jimbo fisher said that jimbo yeah. fisher was 100 percent correct ohio state does not belong in there notre dame should be not in there as well probably because they got nuked by clemson the second time they played them at full strength right it should be bama clemson texas a&m probably oklahoma i was surprised at oklahoma was i the only one that was surprised they snuck in at well, six I, was I mean, I, th- I feel like the the five and six slot for the committee is just kind of like paying lip service to make people feel good. Because, I mean, you're not in the playoffs, so agree. it's, it's kind of like, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but you're at six. That's such a privilege. No, I mean, does it matter? Not really. I mean, other than maybe what bowl game you get. But yeah. uh, I have the Brian Kelly quote, sorry, because um, I want to do it justice. He's talking. They were asking about, like, people questioning their legitimacy to be in yeah. the playoffs. And he said – We've got two top 15 wins. We've got a win over this Clemson team that was number one in the country. I don't know that anybody has a resume that has those two wins. And we've played 11 games. That matters, playing 11 games. Testing your team week in and week out, I think, in my mind, puts us, as without question, as one of the top four teams in the country. And that's only part of the like quote. He, like, like I said, goes into why that matters as a coach, and it might not matter as much to the committee or whatever. But um, – I like the I like the salty shade there. I don't necessarily agree with the rest of it, but I like the salty shade. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really sad. Like, and you made the point just now that if you're in a group of five, if you're a group of five team, you're just simply you're not invited, and it doesn't really matter what you do. And I, am I saying that they deserve to be there? I don't really know because I mean it's, it's really hard to compare those schedules, especially this year. Yeah. But they deserve the chance, which leads to you need to have an expanded playoff. And in a year 
where we've just thrown everything out the window, every rule that we've come up with, you know, whatever, we just kind of experimenting with whatever. Um, I really wish that they would have had the same attitude towards the playoff system that they had towards teams like Ohio state, which is basically like, um, I think they're a really good team in the eye test. Let's put them in the playoff and see what happens. You know, I mean, yep. like if you're going to have that attitude, then why not just, you know, apply that attitude to the system and say, look, uh, four teams isn't going to get it done this year. We got to go to yeah. eight. Uh, but the perfect opportunity to it. But the way it, it seemed looked at- like, it seemed like that was never even a part of the equation. Like they never even yeah. really, <laughs> really thought about that seriously anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't fit the paradigm they're trying to create. I mean, look at the matchups you would get if you did an 18 playoff. You'd have Bama versus Cincinnati in the first round. Bless them, Cincinnati, because that would have probably <laughs> Annihilated been Annihilated. Lots but, of but, money, but, though. But they got the it chance. it still would have been a shot. And anybody exactly. on any given day, if the breaks fall the way they're supposed to, even a Cincinnati can beat a Bama. It is it's possible. Really We've possible. seen it. We've been you beat by Utah. Play- I mean, yeah, well, Utah had a really good team and good coach that year. So Clemson would play Florida. That would be a great matchup. Ohio State would play Oklahoma. Again, I I would like to see that just to see if Oklahoma can beat the tar out of them. Um, And then you'd have Notre Dame, Texas A&M for the 4-5 spot. That'd be good. Like all eight of those games or all four of those games are great matchups. I mean, you would – if you can survive – that opening round and get to the semi and then to the final, I, I think you've got a legitimate, you got it. You you're the best of the best. You've proved it. Absolutely. You, and granted, right. you can make the argument that the conference schedule is supposed to be you proving your post games, whatever. But I don't understand why, the, why in college football and every other division in both in college football and in every other sport, they have a multi-team playoff. Right. Well, and I've heard a lot of people with the argument that, oh, well, that makes the, the games during the season not mean as much. And I'm, I, yeah, might, I might be able it to does. see that a little bit, but it still doesn't matter because the games at the end mean so much to a, 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 a broader group of teams. Right here, right. you you'd have you make more money right across the country who all have you know their fans interested in this game, whereas you only have the top four now. And you know what? You got teams like Florida at number seven, where you got you know Kyle Pitts is going uh, is going to forego the bowl game and get ready for the draft. If their team is still in the playoff conversation, he's still playing. Yeah, he's not going or he's still playing. Yeah. They're willing so to make exceptions by taking the Rose Bowl and putting it in a completely different city mm-hmm. so more fans can be there. Right. They're willing to change those rules, but they're not willing to be like, you know what we could do? Make more money and just let other people play. It, it seems the like amount of money, it's weird. The, the amount of money that they leave on the table every single year by not expanding the playoff is yeah. mind-numbing because you would make so much – just off the TV rights alone. Right. The, those those four games would be – you would see astronomical – well, maybe not the Bama Cincy game because that probably game – that probably not. But then again, fans would be so happy. Be so but cool. then again, Cincinnati's a big media market, I think. Aren't they top 10, top 15? Uh, uh, they'd be a top, top 40 for sure. Yeah, well, they're up there. But, I mean, I just – it doesn't make any sense. Well, and look at the I, geography. I you're you're that. spread across you know all most there. of the country here, so you've got you know people from all over uh, interested. I, I don't. I mean, we've already said it. I just don't. I don't know what it's going to take for them to wake up and make this decision to just you know broaden it to eight teams. It it seems like a no brainer. This was so. the year. If if this wasn't the year, I just don't know if or when they do it. Yeah, there's a lot of things they got to look at going forward. 